Welcome to OIA Conversations, where we share information and learn more about people, programs, and issues that are important and relevant to the U.S. territories and to the freely associated states. My name is Tanya Joshua, Deputy Director of Policy and Communications Lead in the Office of Insular Affairs at the U.S. Department of the Interior in Washington, D.C. Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution mandates that we count the population every, every decade. These counts help determine determine seats in Congress and federal funding to support local communities. Today, we are speaking with Jennifer Kim, Assistant Division Chief, Content Translation, Puerto Rico, and Island Areas Operations. Their office managed the decennial census in the U.S. territories. Jennifer, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. So um, we're focused today on the territories, and that would be on the smaller territories, uh, not so much Puerto Rico, since that is not in the in part of the responsibilities of our office. Could you tell us about 2020 census and, and how that happened uh, in the territories this time? Sure. We had an operation called 2020 Island Area Censuses, and this was specifically focusing on the censuses um, in American Samoa, Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, Guam, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Um, this was an operation where we had uh, four uh, different territories where we sent out our census advisors uh, to be part of overseeing the census operations there. Um, so in American Samoa, we had a census advisor named Jason Kopp, who was the advisor and lived in Pango Pango for over a year, actually, um, and oversaw the census there. And then in uh, CNMI, we had our office in Saipan, where Colleen Joyce, our census advisor, was there, uh, there for a year overseeing the, the censuses. We had our main office in Saipan and then two satellite locations in Rota and Tinian. And in Guam, we had um, our advisor named Terry Long, who oversaw our operations there as well. And we had a very, a fairly large office given the, the large um, operation there. Was that the first time that you had census officials situated in the territories? We've actually had for every decennial census, we had an advisor um, out in the territory. So this was not the first time. However, what it was for the first time was in the US Virgin Islands this time, we sent two advisors, one to the St. Thomas and St. John district, and then one to the St. Croix district. In the past, we had one advisor for each of the territories. And this time, um, given the footprint and the, the location of the two offices in the Virgin Islands, uh, we deployed two advisors. And their names are Tomas Encarnacion in St. Croix and Dan Doyle in St. Thomas. Jennifer, could you give us, uh, could you explain for us how the census differs between the territories and uh, in the U.S. mainland or stateside? Sure. Sure, yeah, for the island areas, we have a separate operation dedicated to the island area censuses of the four territories that I had mentioned. And what's different um, from the stateside census uh, versus the island areas, number one, is that the content of the questionnaires is a lot longer. And that is because while there are other uh, surveys that happen stateside um, in the island areas, really the decennial census is our one-time shot every 10 years to collect data. Um, so we ask detailed questions on demographic, socio characteristics, and housing data as well. Um, some of our viewers here may be uh, familiar with the American Community Survey, where we um, send out questionnaires that are um, asking questions much more in depth. Because we are not um, conducting those surveys, uh, we use very similar content to the American Community Survey and leverage that to create our islander censuses so that once our data are released that there are a lot more characteristics and a lot more data that we will see for the island areas. And then another uh, difference that we can set aside uh, with stateside and with the island areas is that in the island areas we have a contract agreement with each of the office of the governor of each territory and we partner with them to collect the data. So um, I had mentioned that we have census advisors from census bureau headquarters who goes out to the island areas to oversee and provide technical guidance, uh, the actual work of the data collection is conducted by the local staff, which is very exciting in that the folks that who know the layout of the land and who are familiar uh, with the population are the folks who are conducting the census. Um, so in this contract agreement, uh, the Census Bureau has an agreement with each of the governor's office. What the contract states is that the Census Bureau will provide the funding and all of the data collection materials, the methodology, all of the overall 
oversight. And in return, the local government, uh, the territory government, would provide the staff in the field who would conduct the census. Um, so that is a, a huge partnership that we have with each of the territories. And um, at the beginning of uh, the operation, um, so while the census is conducted in, it was conducted in spring of 2020, that's when we uh, started our operation using April 1st, 2020 as a census reference date. Uh, we opened our offices in the island areas in September and October timeframe, so the fall prior to the year. So in a September, October timeframe in 2019, we officially opened our five census offices uh, where we had a very nice ceremony with the government officials in the territories and uh, with our leadership coming from the Census Bureau to meet with our local staff and kicking that off. Um, so the office um, operated for about a year throughout the life cycle of the census and uh, we had our um, local staff who worked on not just on data collection specifically, but we had folks who were working in partnership and communication and other aspects of the census um, that were all needed uh, to make this operation very successful. I have a quick question going back to the, the question. So it's a much longer survey in the territories, given that uh, we don't all, always have the occasion as we do in the mainland to conduct uh, surveys every other year, uh, updates, so to speak. So question about the survey, do the territories have any input uh, into the questions that, they, that are conducted? Yeah, absolutely. So our work uh, officially began with the territories uh, in 2016, so four years prior to the actual implementation of the census, uh, where the Census Bureau reached out to the governors of each territory and asked for a government agency designated by the governor to um, be our uh, lead partner in conducting the census. Um, so that all happens four years prior. And during the four years leading up to it, um, a lot of conversations take place, a lot of meetings that take place uh, for us to plan the census. So specific to your question about the census questioner content, uh, the questioner content that we use for 2020 island area censuses um, was um, very close to the American Community Survey with the exception of four different questions that were introduced that were added to the questionnaire at the request of our liaisons. Very, very nice. That's good to know that, that they have that input. Now, you mentioned your offices and your work started way earlier. Tell me about COVID and how that came into the picture with your work in the territories. Sure. So as we started our operation in March, uh, where we sent our field workers out to uh, go door to door and uh, start collecting data, that is when um, all the closures happened, uh, not just for the island areas, but for stateside operation. So we did uh, temporarily close all of our offices and temporarily close um, all of our field data work. Um, and we resumed um, later in a couple months. Um, and we were able to do that. Um, in the case of Guam, we actually had two separate closures because of the cases uh, surging again. Um, so uh, while the other territories had a one-time closure, we did have to close our field operations uh, twice for that. Um, but I just want to take this moment to give a huge shout out to all of our local staff and all of our partners in the territories who showed their resilience and their dedication to the work along with our census advisors uh, who, although everything had been postponed, of course, because of the, the temporary pause on our operation. Uh, they did it. Uh, uh, we, we made sure that all of the data were collected once it was deemed safe to go out and collect the data. And uh, we had all of our uh, offices uh, successfully close um, at the conclusion of the operation in the fall of 2020. And since, our, um, since then, our census advisors have returned back to headquarters as well. Is there, Jennifer, anything in particular that's different about the territories that you might not have mentioned related to the stateside operations in terms of collecting data or doing surveys? Um, I'm thinking online or telephones or door to door. Yeah, so the biggest distinction is that we had our field workers who actually went door to door to every household to collect the data. Um, so there were two uh, main events that happened. One is called address listing, where we sent out all of our uh, field workers to go out and list all of the um, housing units um, and making a list of our address list and then um, doing verifications for that. And then once that list was generated, we sent out our um, interviewers, our field workers once again, 
again to go back to those um, households and begin collecting the data. So each, every single household was contacted um, by a, an enumerator, which is someone who collects basically the census data. Um, so that is one of the biggest distinctions is that there was that um, in-person contact for every household. What role does technology play in the territories? Sure, so we had our IT footprint in each of the census offices. So as part of our contract agreement, the Census Bureau um, provided all of the IT equipment that would be needed, all of our computer workstations, um, et cetera. And we had um, an internal working system where when uh, data were collected and they were checked into the office, we had a, a, um, an automated system um, that tracked um, all of the, all the housing units that had been uh, interviewed versus that have not and keeping stack of all of our other operational control. I'm sure if my advisors are watching right now that I, I don't think I will be doing all the justice of all the inner workings of how that technology played a role, but that is one way of highlighting is that it, it was an automated tracking system for us to keep track of all of the assignments, uh, what assignments were still out to be completed, what had been completed. And we also put in very strong quality assurance protocols. Um, so making sure that all um, all the questioners that came in um, were reviewed um, and that um, they had been deemed successfully, uh, uh, successfully concluded. Right. And then in terms of individuals, so in the in the in state side, you don't visit every house or do you visit every house state side or yeah, so, mm, yeah, so or you rely on people office. to be entering data themselves? online. For stateside operation, there are two components where there is an option for respondents to uh, respond to the census on their own uh, through through mail, phone, or the internet. And then for those households that do not self-respond, uh, we have what we call the non-response follow-up operation, where we send our field workers to collect the data. Uh, one interesting thing that happened uh, with our work in the territories is while our plan was to have 100% uh, data collection by in-person visits, uh, when um, COVID happened, uh, we had to think on our feet very quickly and we added a supplemental um, response option for people to call in and give us their information um, so that they did not um, have to face that in-person uh, contact with another individual. And that was very successful and something that we are looking to continue. I love that example, how COVID has changed so many things and it has even impacted census and the way you will potentially do it going forward. Um, so, so moving forward then, Jennifer, uh, what, is, what is happening now in terms of preparing for release of numbers uh, in the territories? What does that look like? Yeah, so right now our analysts are working uh, very hard to get first our population housing unit counts out, um, and that will be the first data that are delivered. Um, and then once uh, those data are delivered, there will be other um, data that will come out that talk about the different characteristics of the island areas. And of course, uh, speaking of COVID, um, everything got postponed. Uh, that also includes our stateside data releases and so forth. So uh, we are still in the process of um, um, coming up with the final schedule and uh, sharing that with the public and that looks like, but that is still being handled by um, our team right now. Is there, um, in terms of small numbers and privacy, are there special considerations that census has to do for the territories because of mm. the small sizes of populations there? We do, the answer is yes. So if anybody wants in general information about the census, they can just go to census.gov uh, mm -hmm. to look for any information about release and timing and, and when all of those different dates will, will take place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so perhaps in closing, you could share with us uh, lessons learned. You, you mentioned a couple, but are there any other lessons learned uh, this year in the 2020 census in the territories? Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, I think a lot of our lessons were, lessons learned were actually affirming um, that the decisions that we made going into 2020 census um, was a win for us. Um, so for example, leveraging the American Community Survey questionnaire for the Island Area Censuses questionnaire, uh, 
uh, was very successful um, because we already have the American Community Survey um, for stateside operations. Uh, once the data were collected, uh, we were able to leverage a lot of our existing uh, processing programs um, to process our data for the island areas. Um, so, and also um, having the same consistent questionnaire content across the territories uh, was very successful for us, um, especially when the data come out in terms of being able to compare um, the data, data sets across the board. Um, that will be very uh, helpful for us. Um, and then another, uh, another affirmation was that having for the Virgin Islands, having two census advisors, one in the St. Thomas, St. John district, and one in St. Corey district, that was also very successful for us so that we had two individuals overseeing um, those two locations. Um, another win for us uh, is what we talked about, being able to add the telephone option um, uh, we had respondents respond to that, and um, that was another great way of us, um, although we talked about how this is something that came out of COVID, um, but something that worked really well and something that we want to explore further. Um, you know, I should perhaps just ask you, is there a big difference between the work in Puerto Rico and the work in the smaller island areas? Mm. Yeah, there is a, quite a difference with Puerto Rico operations versus the island areas. Um, the Puerto Rico um, has what we call the Puerto Rico Community Survey, which is the American Community Survey, um, similar to that. Um, because those uh, surveys are conducted in Puerto Rico, um, for the decennial census, they use uh, the same content for stateside because the additional data are collected throughout the decade. So that is the biggest difference between um, Puerto Rico operations operations versus the island areas. And uh, of course, the, the, the other large differentiation is that we have a separate operation that is focused and dedicated uh, to the island area censuses where we work directly with the, with the local government. We've been speaking with Jennifer Kim, Assistant Division Chief, Content Translation, Puerto Rico and Island Areas Operations in the Decennial Census Management Division of the U.S. Census Bureau. Thank you so much, Jennifer. And for us at the Office of Insular Affairs and the U.S. Department of the Interior, uh, where we work on the smaller U.S. territories, we are, of course, very happy to hear that the Census Bureau has such uh, paid such close attention to the territories in terms of managing uh, the 2020 census. Did you have any closing thoughts that you wanted to share with us uh, about the work? Thank you again for, for all the work that you and your entire team did in the territories and we look forward to getting those uh, results, but I will turn it over to you for any closing thoughts. Sure, I would be remiss not to give a shout out to the Department of the Interior. Um, you, Tanya, and your team have been very supportive of us throughout the process and we have really uh, enjoyed uh, working with you and being uh, in partnership with you. So thank you for that. Um, I know when we started our uh, data collection that um, there was a press release um, from your agency um, that applauded our efforts and uh, that really uh, was a heartfelt congratulations and we really appreciate it um, that and just being able to partner with you. and also. So I'd like to say a uh, huge thanks to all of our local government officials that we work with, each of the governors of the territories and their liaison agencies, and all of the folks who worked on the census. We employed over um, 2,000 staff um, in all of our territories. I think it's about actually 2,200 and more um, who were uh, part of this census. That was a wonderful participation of our local staff to be part of it. Our staff who went out to list all the addresses, our staff who went to collect the data and conduct the interviews, people who worked in our phone centers, and all of our uh, clerical and administrative staff who were in the office making sure that all of our operations were seamless. Um, so I'd like to give a uh, heartwarming uh, thanks to everyone, every single person who worked on the census, and then also our census advisors who worked very well um, with our liaison agencies and who were very hospitable to our staff. Um, so we, I just want to say thank you to everyone. And I think I hopefully uh, this interview would have shared my sentiment and the excitement of the successes of the 2020 Island Area Census. And we are very proud of um, the work that we were able to accomplish. And we look forward to even greater works that will come ahead, uh, even launching into the 2030 census. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.